Hello, everyone. My name is Kartik Vijayaraghavan, and I'm a document DB specialist solutions architect with AWS. I've been helping customers build solutions using NoSQL databases for the last on more than six years now. And I've had numerous opportunities to help customers devise strategies and solutions for both greenfield applications as well as migrations from other databases, like you know, other document databases as well as relational databases. And one common area where I see customers benefit the most is with data management when it is done right. And in today's webinar, I'll be discussing about the best practices for data management with Amazon Document DB. I'll start with the basics and provide an overview of Amazon Document DB and its architecture. So if you're new to Document DB, do not worry, we got you covered. I will then provide an overview of data management processes that customers care about when working with a document database and discuss how Document DB addresses them. I will then discuss the common topic that I often hear from customers, uh, which is data archival and data purging. I'll go over the use cases for data archival and talk to you about a reference architecture for implementing optimal archival strategy with Document DB. I'll also talk about you know, the best practices for purging data with Document DB. I'll show all of this as a demo towards the end and wrap this webinar with an update on our recent releases and programs that we offer to help customers like yourself. We have a lot to cover, so let's jump right into it. Let's start with what is Document DB. Amazon Document DB is a fully managed, scalable, MongoDB compatible database service that can scale millions of requests per second with millisecond level latency. So let's peel the onion a little bit more, right? What, what do we mean by fully managed service? The Document DB is fully managed by AWS. There is no hardware to provision. It is pretty simple to set up through AWS Management Console, and you can you know, spin up a cluster within minutes. Uh, Management Console is one option. You can also use you know, CDKs and CLIs. And of course, CloudFormation, Terraform, or, or whatever you, know, you prefer. Document DB has built-in high availability. Clusters are automatically provisioned across multiple availability zones within a region of your choice. Best practices are enabled by default. For example, in Document DB, you cannot disable backups because we firmly believe backup is super important for any database. So we give you the initial backup at no cost. You get high durability by default with Document DB with the data copied six ways across three availability zones. You can leverage Document DB's uh, you know, AWS IAM integration to control access to document DB resources. And you can use our custom as well as built-in role-based access control to enforce least privileged access to data uh, you know, for, for your application and uh, you know, your users of your database. In order to update your database version, you no longer need to spend hours writing you know, run books, testing the rollback plans, and you know, manually deploying updates with document DB, patching, maintenance, uh, everything is handled automatically by the service. Finra is one of our many customers who utilize Document DB without needing any overhead from their engineering teams. Document DB's architecture decouples storage and compute. Separation of storage and compute allows you to scale both of these components independently. You can scale compute horizontally or vertically within minutes regardless of the amount of data stored in the cluster. This is very important because the scaling in Document DB is not a function of your data volume. Storage and IO scales automatically in Document DB from 10 gigabytes all the way up to 64 terabytes. The scaling happens in 10 gigabyte segments. So customers like you do not have to worry about provisioning EBS volumes or scaling on-prem storage area networks. The compute instances scale out to 15 read replicas within minutes, allowing you to you know, perform millions of read operations per second. Ion is one of our customers that scales their cluster regardless of the data size. They, they scale, perform the scale operation in minutes. Right? This is as a service provider. Like they do a queue as a service, container as a service. They accumulate a large volume of data, and they scale within minutes, regardless of how much data they are storing. There are many other customers that use Document DB at this capacity. 
Finally, MongoDB compatibility. Document DB is compatible with MongoDB 3.6 and 4.0. You can use the same MongoDB SDKs, tools, APIs you know, in your application to interact with Document DB. Freshworks, one of the recently IPO'd companies, they love the fact that we are compatible with MongoDB and they were able to you know, migrate from MongoDB into Document DB with zero code changes to their application. Now, obviously, they had to change the endpoint, but that was pretty much it. So before I, I talk about the architecture uh, you know, and, and capabilities and features, let's understand the application of a document database. Document databases are a great fit when the data is modeled as JSON. A JSON by itself you know, allows you to store data flexibly so you can make changes quickly. And uh, you know, this is very important, especially in those you know, modern applications where rapid innovation is super critical. So in addition to storing the data as JSON, document db or document databases in general allows you to query the data uh, you know with very flexible indexing options to boost your performance you can use document databases for running your operational workload and also perform near real-time analytics amazon document db is a popular choice of document database uh, that makes it easier to store query and index json data so you know so who who, who are the customers that are using document db Amazon, yeah, sure. Amazon, uh, you know, the parent company certainly uses it for pretty mission critical, you know, workloads. But in addition to Amazon, this purpose-built database service is used by many of our other customers across different industries and verticals. Uh, we could fit a few in this slide, but there are many, many customers that are using Document DB for their mission critical tier one workloads. So now let's talk about the architecture of the service and uh, you know the capabilities that the service offers. Right? So let's start with the capabilities that are of interest to our customers. Compatibility with MongoDB. This allows our customers to use the same application code, tools, and drivers to seamlessly migrate to a fully managed AWS service. We often see customers migrating from their on-prem or even on cloud, like even from the fully managed service, uh, which is the Atlas service into Document DB to leverage the benefit of the you know, AWS ecosystem. Separation of storage and compute allows our customers to scale their compute in minutes. And this is again, very important thing to understand here is it is regardless of the storage size. This is huge for customers that are storing you know, tens of terabytes of data and have defined peak volumes. Customers can scale with a predictable time of 10 minutes or less, regardless of their storage volume. With Document DB's managed replication, customers can scale out reads, leveraging the read replicas. And you know, Document DB allows you to have up to 15 replicas in a cluster and lets you scale to millions of reads uh, per second. And Document DB provides high durability by default. The data is replicated six ways across three AZs, so you can you know, be rest assured that data is durably stored in Document DB. Backups in Document DB are continual, they are incremental, and they're streamed to S3 with no impacts to application performance. And you'll learn more about how we do this with no impact to application performance just in the next slide. So now let's discuss about the architecture that provides durability, scalability, and a global data-based uh, footprint uh, to support these capabilities. So as you can see in this picture, uh, Document DB's architecture uh, you know, decouples storage and compute. So you can scale them independently. The compute instances are shown at the, at the top and this distributed storage volume can be seen at the bottom. The compute instances can be scaled horizontally or vertically. So we offer a, a variety of instances starting from T4G medium to R6G16 XL, or if you want a larger instance, we have R5, 24XL, so you can scale up vertically or you can scale out horizontally. And uh, you, know, you, you can determine which availability zones uh, these instances should be spun up at, when, at the cluster creation time. So the instances will be distributed across you know, at maximum three availability zones to give you high durability, uh, sorry, high availability. And for high durability, Document DB replicates data six ways across three AZs in that distributed storage volume that you see at the bottom. Document DB's architecture allows us to offload tasks to respective layers. This is very important, right? Because uh, let's say, for example, the replication, I said data is replicated six ways across three AZs. This replication task is offloaded to the storage volume. So your instances are freed up from this replication work 
and you know they are focusing more on compute heavy work such as query processing likewise backup is another task that is offloaded to the storage volume further freeing your instances to perform compute heavy work and this is why i was telling you earlier that you can take backups without impacting your application because your your instances that uh, that interact with your application do not participate in this backup so document db again as a reminder is a fully managed service this means aws manages these replication and backup tasks and ensures that the data is fully replicated and backed up allowing you to focus on developing features that matter to your customers. Let's start with uh, you know, some of the document DB features now. Uh, let's start with the query capabilities. Document DB uh, provides query capabilities that are pretty powerful. You can perform joins, asset transactions, along with complex aggregations like groups and counts and so on. To support these queries, various types of indexing is supported as well. Simple index, compound index, time to live index, array index, parse index, and so on. And you know, the fully managed service makes scaling, patching, provisioning, you know, an automated maintenance and failover features possible. So you can focus on what matters to business and do not worry about the undifferentiated heavy lifting that is managed for you by AWS. Native integration with other AWS servers. This is super important because it helps to make your tech stack very simple, right? And this is one of the many reasons why a lot of customers choose Document DB. For example, Document DB integrates with CloudWatch for monitoring and alarms, and with CloudTrail for auditing, with Athena for running SQL queries, with Secrets Manager for credential management. You can secure your Document DB deployment into a VPC of your choice by leveraging the VPC service integration. DMS integrations allow you to you know, migrate data into Document DB. So does Glue integration uh, for ETL jobs. You can encrypt your data and manage that encryption keys uh, in KMS. Right? So there are like quite a few services we integrate. Uh, we also have like now backup integration, AWS backup integration, and so on. So, and then the next feature that I would like to call out is chain streams. Chain stream simplifies the integration with upstream and downstream systems. And then there is global clusters that allows you to build globally distributed application with fully managed replication across the globe and with low latency access uh, from regional clusters. Now that you understand how document DB works and what capabilities it provides, let's move to the topic of the day, which is data management. The term data management refers to a range of practices and methodologies used for the purpose of helping organizations to better leverage the data. Now, every organization that we work with has their own data governance strategies. The processes defined by data management are super important and responsible for implementing those objectives defined by the data governance strategies. The main goal, if you look at it, uh, for data management is to ensure that the data remains as a secure, you know, private and an accessible asset, all while generating actionable insights for the organization. That brings us to four main areas uh, that, that we should focus on for data management. Let's take a look at each one of them. We'll start with data access. This area focuses on implementing strategies that enable organizations to create, update, and access data, basically the CRUD operations across the data tiers. And this also includes archives. And it is very important to pay attention to the archival strategies as document databases in general are meant to be used as an OLTP or online transaction processing data store. The next focus area is data integration, which focuses on integrating the data sources, both internal to the organization or external, or I should say, and external in an organized fashion to enable organization to derive value from the data. And then there is data security and privacy where the focus is on enforcing security and privacy policies on a continual basis for your data. And lastly, there is data availability, which focuses on implementing backup and disaster recovery plans to ensure business continuity during various you know, disaster scenarios. Now let's take a look at how you can effectively implement the processes and methodologies for data management with Amazon Document DB. For data access, you can leverage the MongoDB APIs, tools, drivers. We will discuss on how you can implement the archival and purge process just in a bit. For data security, DocumentDB provides role-based access control to define fine-grained access uh, control. Um, we can use custom roles or built-in roles. 
Also, DocumentDB provides options to encrypt data at rest by natively integrating with KMS, or the key management service, uh, which is yet another AWS service we integrate with. And we are, for encryption over the wire, uh, we support TLS. For data integration, DocumentDB supports chain streams to move data to upstream or downstream systems. And we'll cover more about chain streams just in a bit here. And also the native integration uh, with services like Glue, Athena, and DMS come handy to you know, simplify the integration of data uh, across the services. And finally, for data availability, DocumentDB supports continuous and automated backups along with point-in-time recovery. And we also have global clusters for cross-region replication to support disaster recovery and business continuity planning use cases. For the remainder of this presentation, we will focus on the archival and purging process as it requires custom implementation as per your workload requirements. Let's start with some common use cases for archival. The first use case is to support compliance requirements in accordance with policies, applicable laws, and regulations uh, for retaining data for extended periods. For example, uh, you know, uh, with financial organization, it is very common to store data for seven years but frequently the data is queried only for the first year. In such case, it's ideal to archive the historical data for compliance reasons in a cold storage system. Another use case is to store documents that do not need frequent access so that you can reduce cost. And the third use case, again, it's, it's archival is very common when you want to use DocumentDB for storing operational data while maintaining those JSON collections in S3 for analytical purposes. Now, if I go back to the compliance requirement for financial organizations that, that I just talked about, it is ideal to use S3 for that historical data so that you can query that data when you need it. Let's say a regulation officer uh, comes in and says, I want a data that is six years old. You can still issue that query against S3 and get the data. It need not be an operational query. At that point, it becomes an analytical query. And the last use case, it's not very common, but you know, it's still, still a possibility is for um, you know, to address the capacity needs beyond DocumentDB's current 64 terabyte storage volume. Now let's discuss a reference architecture for implementing data archival. And we made this architecture available as a hands-on lab in our DocumentDB workshop portal, where you can find a cloud formation template to deploy the solution. I'll, I'll share that link towards the end of this webinar. So hang in tight. So this reference architecture is based on DocumentDB chain streams. Chain streams is a feature in DocumentDB that provides time ordered sequence of change events that occurs within your cluster's collections. It could be across you know, the databases, within a database, you can pick and choose. In this architecture, Amazon EventBridge is used to trigger a Lambda function, which runs every minute to ensure continuous polling of the DocumentDB chain stream events. This Lambda function connects to DocumentDB via credentials stored in Secrets Manager and watches for changes in a predefined uh, time period. You can customize this, but for this demo uh, you know, in, the, in this workshop, we have used it as 15 seconds. So at the end of each poll cycle, the function writes the last polled resume token to another collection within the cluster. So what's a resume token? Right? It is nothing but uh, you know, a feature that ChainStream has to allow resuming a chain stream later using the token, which is generally the document ID of the last retrieved uh, change event document. Right? So this token basically acts as a checkpoint mechanism for the next Lambda invocation to resume the polling activity of new documents from wherever it left off. So it, it runs every minute, change, takes all the changes, and then like you know keeps a checkpoint of the last change. It's as simple as that. So this Lambda function takes these changes and writes them into um, you know, S3. And it includes you know, uh, things like, you know, what is the operation type? Was it an insert operation, an update operation, or the delete operation? And then it also stores the document into S3. And if you have existing DocumentDB collections, you know, before you enable change streams, you may first want to use an utility like Mongo export. Again, MongoDB compatibility kicks in here because you can use Mongo export tools to export your data uh, from your collections and then store it into S3 and then go to your database, uh, enable change streams, and then just deploy this architecture. So once the data is archived to S3, you can then query the data in S3 using Athena or in any, uh, in any other preference on how you access data in S3. So this, this function will focus on, you know, the solution would focus on moving the data into S3. 
So this archival process, you know, helps to move the data to S3, like I just mentioned. Let's now talk about how to purge and delete the data efficiently from DocumentDB. Now there are two options to do this, right? You can use a TTL index. TTL stands for time to live. And this index allows you to set a timeout on each document. When a document reaches that TTL age limit, it is automatically deleted from the collection. That's fairly straightforward to use TTL. Uh, it certainly simplifies the purge process, but it is important to know that TTL indexes result in an explicit delete operation. And document deletion uh, incurs IO, which is one of the pricing dimensions uh, for document DB. So the workloads that have high TTL deletes will result in an increased IO usage. On top of it, if your workload is write heavy, you know the TTL deletes can be suboptimal because just considering cost and performance. So another option, you know, uh, as an alternate there is to use rolling collections. In this option, you basically segment the documents into collection based on the retention period and drop these collections after the retention period expires. Since dropping a collection in document DB does not result in explicit delete operation, you don't incur any IO cost. Also, dropping a collection is efficient from a performance standpoint because the buffer cache is not updated. Therefore, the regular read and write operations are not impacted. Now, let's discuss uh, an you know, optimal uh, solution to design this purge process using rolling collections. The design consideration here encompasses four things, right? Collection design, document modeling, app design, and then archival design. A collection design basically follows an N plus one approach. Uh, what I mean by this is N here is the number of collections that are required to host data for the defined retention period. Let's take an example. Let's say we want to retain most recent 30 days of data in document DB and archive the older data to you know, S3 or, or whatever the cold storage of choices. From a collection design perspective, we will create two 30-day collections. Uh, one collection stores the most recent 30 days of data and the other collection stores previous uh, 30 days of data. We'll call this current month and previous month. And you'll see this in the demo as well. From a document modeling perspective, you should include an attribute in your JSON called say updated on date, right? Which is to basically to track the last modified date. Additionally, you can also include a field to flag uh, if the document was soft deleted. Let's call it is archived. Now this is an optional field and it helps to keep track of the documents you know, that are updated within the retention period. And you'll see how this, this field is used uh, just in a bit in the demo as well. From an application design perspective, you have to pay attention to the queries, right? The application should insert the most recent data into the current month collection. And you know, when it comes to the find operation or the read operation, the query should uh, you know, use both the collections to retrieve data uh, you know, that is for the most uh, recent 30 days. So if you're in the middle of the month, the first 15 days would come from the current month, last 15 days would come from the previous month, right? And you can, you know, even though there are two queries in this case, uh, the performance can be optimized using the asynchronous drivers by issuing those parallel queries. Now for update operations, obviously the application will write to the most recent uh, collection, which is in this case, the current month collection, but what if the document was in the previous month? So in that case, you'll, you'll still write it to the current month and mark the one in the previous month for soft deletion using that is archive flag. Or if you don't need to keep track of it, you can just delete it from the older collection as well. Now delete operations are fairly straightforward. You'll remove it from the current month and previous month uh, you know, as applicable. And finally, the archival design, we talked about it on how you can use change streams to move the data from current month in, in this example to your S3 bucket. So this will be like moving data from current month um, and in, in a, in a real-time fashion or near real-time fashion to S3. When the retention period hits, like let's say in our case, 30 days, at the end of the month, we will just drop the previous month, rename the current month to previous month and create a new current month and, and keep rolling like that, right? So this solution certainly increases complexity, right? From an application design perspective, because you have to now design your queries accordingly, uh, but the performance and cost optimization that this solution offers makes it a compelling contender for purge solutions. So it's demo time now, right? So I've talked a lot about you know, how the solution solutioning works for archival and uh, you know, purge process. So let's, I'll, I'll start this demo with the rolling collection implementation that we just discussed. I'll demonstrate various query patterns, and then I'll show how chain streams helps to archive data to S3. Let's navigate to the AWS management console now and take a look. 
Okay, I'm here at the document DB console. And as you can see, I have a cluster created. It's a regional cluster called demo. And I can access this cluster through a cloud man environment, which is nothing but an EC2 instance on the cloud. I've also deployed the chain streams reference architecture that I showed you. Uh, so I have uh, basically deployed this, this architecture. So I already showed you the cloud man environment and document DB cluster. I have configured secrets manager uh, for this document DB cluster. And there is a Lambda function, uh, which, which uh, will be pulled by this um, event bridge hook, which writes it into an S3 bucket. So, so as you can see, uh, I have a Lambda function that writes the data to a bucket called csdogdb archive. I'm watching a, a database called SampleDB for a specific collection called current month. And uh, you know, when, whenever the Lambda function runs, it will archive the data into this S3 bucket called csdogdb archive. So uh, before I show you the uh, chain stream implementation, let me go to the doc, uh, Cloud9 environment and connect to the document DB cluster. So I'm connecting to the cluster. And there I am. I'm, I'm, I'm on my Mongo shell right now, pointing to document DB. So let me do a show DBs here. You can see that I have two databases. I'm going to use sample db as my database and if i do a show collections over here you can see that i have those two collections again we talked about rolling collection i have a current month and a previous month so again my requirement here is to retain 30 days of data so i have the data spanning over uh, 60 days here the, following the n plus one uh, collection strategy or the collection design we talked about so let's look at some of the CRUD operations, right? Let's say I want to insert data. So I'm using the MongoDB API called insert one, and I'm inserting into the current month collection over here. So as you can see, I'm just inserting my name here, email and other stuff. And, uh, and I'm saying that this archive is false because I don't want it to be soft deleted from the get go. So I inserted a data. Now, what if I want to read the data? Right, so I can issue another MongoDB query against the current collection. So I'm saying, you know, find uh, last name Vijay Raghavan, and it is basically finding my my record here. But our data spans over two collections, current month and previous month. So I'll have to issue the same query uh, or similar query, I would say, into the previous month collection as well. So I'm saying, you know, find the same bare predicate of last name. But I'm also saying the updated on, which was our, our uh, you know, one of the design approach we discussed for document modeling to use the updated on. And we want to get anything that is, uh, you know, 30 days uh, uh, before today, and then with, which is not archived. So I'm going to run that. And I find another user called Arun Vijay Raghun, who is my brother. Uh, so, you know, we have like now two users uh, spanning across these two collections. So from a find operation, you can certainly, you know, issue these as a, you know, as parallel queries using the async drivers, like I was explaining before. So even though they are two queries, they'll go in parallel. So you would not have like much of a performance impact. There is some overhead, but it can be mitigated through the async drivers. Now, let's say we want to update record, right? Let's take the complicated scenario where we want to update Arun's phone number to something else. And Arun doesn't exist in the current month. So our update query looks like this. Right, where I'm updating Arun uh, with whatever new phone number I want to give. And I'm saying, you know, the is, is archived is false. And I'm saying update is true. Sorry, absurd is true. Meaning, if the document doesn't exist, go ahead and insert it there. So you can see that I get a response, which is very similar to what you would get from MongoDB, again, citing the MongoDB compatibility here. Uh, so you will see that I got an ID in, uh, indicating that this document was inserted but I got a match count zero, meaning it didn't find any matches, so it just inserted a new record. So it is important to go to the previous month's collection and you know, mark it uh, for soft deletion. So I'll run this query now on the previous month collection and just say that, hey, mark this for soft deletion or say this, this archive flag is true. Uh, and then also I say absurd is false, right? Because if it doesn't exist, I just don't want to make any new inserts there. So I did that, it matched one, and we're done, right? So, so that, is, that is great. We, we are able to perform insert operation. What about delete? Now, if I want to delete Arun, uh, I just have to delete him from the current month because I know my queries are going to use is archived 
uh, as false. So I've already soft deleted in the previous month. I don't have to go and perform a delete operation there. If you want, you can, but it is not needed. So I'll just go and say delete from the current month because I know eventually the previous month collection would just be rolled over or, or you know uh, dropped and the current month will be changing to previous month and so on. So I don't really have to issue a, a delete query there to get this going. So, so that's how the application design, the document modeling and the rolling collection strategy comes. The final piece in that design was the archival, which I showed what is deployed. Now let's go and trigger this Lambda function. Now we have a, a event bridge hook, which we'll call it, but uh, just in the interest of time, I'm gonna trigger this function and I see that it processed some records. So I'm gonna go into S3 here and I'm gonna refresh our S3 uh, bucket. So you can see that sample DB is created, current month, and it just follows a date uh, folder structure here. And you can see three documents are inserted. Now why three? Because I performed three operations, right? I did an insert for Karthik. I performed an up upsert, which was also an insert for Arun. And then I deleted Arun. So you can see, uh, you know, if I download this uh, document and show you, all that it contains is, is the JSON file, right? Basically, uh, this was streamed from uh, uh, document DB to S3 by chain stream. So the chain stream operation type was insert. So I marked that as well. Um, and the source code is all available. So if you want to enhance or change it to your needs, that's totally fine. But this is a basic implementation where you can see the JSON data now stored in S3, right? now. If you look at the other record here for Arun, uh, it's going to be pretty much similar, right? It is going to say that it was an inserted record for Arun Vijay Raghavan. Now, the key thing here is when you delete, you're not going to get a handle to the doc. You're going to get a handle to the ID. So what, what we do here is take that ID, right? And uh, we mark uh, the operation type as delete for this particular doc ID. Now, the doc ID is same. So you're basically maintaining a revision as well now, right? So you're saying, hey, this is the you know most recent doc ID, and uh, you know what is the timestamp and what is the operation state. So we know that you know if I go by the timestamp, I know that uh, this is the most recent time and the document is deleted. So in addition to not just querying, you can also get a snapshot or a view of what happened to a particular user's document in document DB, in what order it was processed, and so on. So the use cases are you know. Uh, like many much more than just archiving, but it certainly solves the, the primary requirement of archiving data into a cold storage system. So that brings us to the end of this demo. Let's go back to the presentation now. Hope you enjoyed the demo. Before I wrap up the session, I would like to highlight some of the recent releases and programs we offer to help customers. We recently launched a free trial for DocumentDB. You can now try Amazon DocumentDB for free with a one month free trial. This will allow you to evaluate DocumentDB for your needs without worrying about the budget. Graviton Instances was launched late last year and it provides better price to performance improvement. You can see up to 30% improvement in performance with a 5% reduction in cost. Role-based access control uh, and user-defined roles allows you to define custom rules for controlling access to data which is again very important from a data management perspective considering security. Global clusters are ideal for disaster recovery use cases that demand strict recovery time objectives and for use cases that need local read capabilities. AWS backup integration allows you to centrally manage your backup uh, along with other AWS database services. Being a native AWS service, DocumentDB, like I said before, integrates with many other AWS services, and AWS Backup was one of the recent ones that we added to our stack. Now, you know that those are all the new releases. It's great, but also, you know, customer obsession is is, is in our blood, right? So we offer a variety of programs to help customers be successful with DocumentDB. Uh, you know, they they are self service uh, and AWS led programs, but at, at no cost to our customers uh, for the most part. If you would like to give DocumentDB a try, you have the following programs at your disposal. The first two in this list are, you know, the tools that allows you to estimate the cost of your DocumentDB cluster and compatibility of your MongoDB uh, workload with DocumentDB. And we offer, you know, immersion days to train customers and get them started with DocumentDB. Now, if you are already using DocumentDB and are about to go live, well-architected review helps to validate if you have uh, deployed your application and uh, document DB cluster in accordance to the best practice and design principles. 
If you need help uh, building migration muscles to migrate a bunch of MongoDB workloads, Spring Boot program offers a good top-down approach to help you get started. And then we also have data lab programs for helping customers build POCs. And we have like seasoned pro serve or professional services resources to provide support and guidance tailored to your needs. We are here to help. Please let us know how we can help you be successful. Well, you know, just, just before I wrap up and open up for q and I just want to mention this, right? We continue to work backwards from customers' needs and add capabilities based on the feedback we receive uh, from our customers to continuously improve and enhance DocumentDB. You can look at our resources tab to keep a track of the announcements and blogs. You can also use our workshop to learn more about DocumentDB by leveraging these hands-on lab modules. And one of these lab modules is that change stream reference architecture that I showed you. So feel free to you know, uh, give it a shot and uh, let us know your feedback. I wanted to thank you for your time and attention today. Uh, we can now open the session for question and answers.